this is what I ate on my flight from Sydney to South Korea. First up, I had a beef bibimbap. It came with instructions on how to make it. So we add in rice, gochujang and sesame oil and mix it all together. It was delicious and definitely one of the better plain meals I've had. They gave us some sides too. I loved the pickled radish. The soybean paste soup was really light in flavor and nice to sip on. And the rolled omelet was interesting. It was slightly sweet. I ended this meal with a Kit Kat and took a long nap. Then I had these sandwiches, which were pretty basic. And my final meal on the flight was this spicy pork and kimchi rice. It was actually pretty good. I had some simple bread and butter and this salad that had prawns and pasta in it. It was quite plain and could do with more of a dressing. The fruit was nice and sweet though. Anyways, I've landed in Seoul now. I can't wait to share my adventures with you. This is everything I ate at Kwangjong Market Part 1. This is one of the largest traditional markets in South Korea and is a great place to go to for authentic Korean food. First stop, I visited this handmade noodle store that featured on Netflix. The shop owner's name is Cho Yeon Soo. It was unreal seeing her cut and prepare the noodles right in front of my seat. First, I tried the kimchi and pork dumplings, which were so nicely wrapped. They looked like mini handbags. The kimchi one was bursting with flavor. The sourness of the kimchi and the bounciness of the fresh dumpling skin was incredible. The meat dumpling was just as good. These dumplings were some of the best I've ever had. Enjoying their kimchi in between bites was so good too. Now for their famous traditional kalguksu, which are Korean knife cut noodles. The beauty of these noodles lies in its different thicknesses and textures. It glides right into your mouth and has such a beautiful chewiness to it. Both of these dishes were 6,000 won each, which is roughly $6.00. 60 Australian dollars. This is everything I ate at Kwangjong Market Part 2. This market in Seoul is absolutely packed with food stores. You take your pick, sit down right in front of the food being prepared and enjoy. A must try is the tteokbokki, which are stir fried rice cakes coated in a glorious spicy gochujang sauce. The ones at this market just hit different. They're thick, bouncy and have a mouth watering chewy texture. You have to pair it with mayak kimbap, which are mini seaweed rice rolls filled with fresh veggies. The name literally translates to drug gimbap because they're so addictive and I can see why. I love dipping it in the spicy tteokbokki sauce. These dishes were just $3.30 AUD each. Next, I got a fish cake for just one Australian dollar, which is such a staple market snack. A tip is to ask for the broth, which they'll give to you for free. There's something so comforting about sipping on the hot soup while eating your fish cake. Go to part three. This is everything I ate at Kwangjong Market Part 3. These are hands down the best donuts I've had in my life. When you see a huge line at a market, that's usually a great sign you're in for something good. At this store, you can see them freshly rolling up the donuts, frying them and coating them in a cinnamon sugar. If this isn't love at first bite, then I don't know what that is. This donut was so freshly crispy on the outside and had the most incredible springy, soft and slightly chewy center. Oh, and they're only $1.10 AUD. Are you kidding me? My quest for sweet snacks continued at the store next door. I got the honey hot dog, which is a sweet Korean pancake. I really enjoyed this too. It was piping hot and crispy on the outside and the honey was deliciously gooey and sweet. To top things off, this was $1.70 AUD. I was feeling thirsty, so I grabbed a cup of sick hair for $2.20 AUD. This is a traditional sweet Korean rice drink and I found it super refreshing and tasty. This ice cream shop has zero staff. I randomly came across this store at 1am in Seoul. I cannot tell you how happy I was when I saw the rows of ice cream freezers. There were so many cool Korean ice creams to choose from and they averaged from just 50 cents to $1 each. So basically you pick your ice creams and they trust you to pay yourself before leaving. You just use a touch screen machine, scan your ice creams and pay by card or cash. And yes, there are cameras around the store. I literally felt like I was in ice cream heaven. Have you have you seen a store like this before? This dinner was on fire. I headed to a restaurant in Seoul where we sat down at traditional tables on the floor. First, these thinly cut slices of Hanwu beef brisket were flame torched. And then the beef fat was used to saute some octopus, clams, kimchi, and a mix of veggies. Just when I thought it couldn't get better, a waterfall of egg was mixed and flame torched in the center, absorbing all of the juices left from before. Is this not a work of art? So the best way to eat it is by making mini wraps where you pick and choose what you like. Tasting the fatty beef, fluffy egg, sourness of the kimchi and crunchy vegetables all in one bite was delicious.
And now for the grand finale. The leftover veggies were cut up to make a fried rice. It was flattened across the grill to form a light crust at the bottom. And wow, what a perfect way to end the meal. This worked out to be 27 Australian dollars per person between four people. It was so worth it. This is what I ate from McDonald's Korea. I got a Happy Meal for $4.70 and what? You can get it with string cheese? The bulgogi burger had a slightly dry patty, but I liked the sweet flavor. For the drink, I got this cute little orange juice, which was refreshing. And yay, I was so happy they had Teen Titans toys. Except they weren't really toys. I was surprised to find a huge coloring in sheet, which also came with stickers and pencils. Okay, now for more menu items. I got four McSpicy chicken tenders for $5.60. They were crispy and yummy especially dipped in Cajun sauce. Next, I tried the $7.60 McSpicy meal. The burger had a nice thick patty and a light kick of spice. And I swear the soft drinks taste extra satisfying in these glass sippy cups. Excuse me, they have churros here? The churro tasted amazing dipped into the chocolate sundae and this combo was $4. Overall, I've got to say McDonald's Korea is pretty good. This is everything I ate at Kamcheon Culture Village. This beautiful town in Busan is also known as Korea Santorini. I made my very own Dalgona candy for $2, which turned out so cute and was a nice honeycomb snack. And wow, look at this blowtorch marshmallow ice cream. It costed $5 and was so good. After biting into the fluffy and toasty marshmallow, you're hit with the smooth chocolate ice cream in the middle. Next, I grabbed a $3 mini bucket of fried chicken, which was amazingly crispy and it was coated in a sweet chili sauce. How cool does this 450 frozen beer look? It was refreshing and the frozen foam at the top was sweet. Then I got a $3 water drop cake which had a jelly-like texture. Not my fave, but it wasn't bad. <sighs> and as soon as I saw this fairy floss stall, I had to get something. I chose this $5.50 bunny and it was so adorable. I ended the day with a $5.50 black pink ice cream and was definitely on a sugar high. This is everything I ate at Bupyong Night Market in Busan. First, I got this huge meatball for $4.40, which was wrapped in bacon, blowtorch, then topped with a creamy sauce. I had no idea it was actually an egg until I pulled out a piece. It had so many layers to it and was a nice snack. Oh my gosh. These were the juiciest $3 chicken skewers I've ever had. They were so succulent, tender, and spicy too. I was obsessed. Then I grabbed this $5.50 pork belly set, which also came with sausage, Tabaki, kimchi, and pickled radish. This was so worth the money, and I loved making combos for each bite. I grabbed this grilled octopus skewer for $4.40. I swear everything was blowtorched at this market. What is going on? It had a nice smoky barbecue flavor, but it was a bit chewy and hard to eat. Yay, and now on to dessert. I grabbed this $6.60 egg waffle, which came with a real piece of honeycomb. Surprisingly, it was not too sweet because the flavors balanced each other out. I really loved this. I swear Busan has the best fish cakes ever. I went to this cart and tried every type of fish cake I could find. They were only $1 each. I met these nice Korean ladies there asking me if I enjoyed it. You have to complete the experience by asking for a hot cup of soup. It's free and it's perfect sipping on it during a cold and windy day. And then I had the best rice cake ever. It had such an addictive, soft, chewy and stretchy texture. I was really fascinated watching them make the tteokbokki from the rice cakes and grabbed some for $1. It's it was incredible. I could stay there all day, but I explored the rest of the market and found this grilled pork belly. I grabbed a freshly rolled pork belly gimbap for $3.80 and yum, it had such a nice kick of spice from the chili and tasted so fresh with all the vegetables. I also grabbed some $5.50 Wagyu beef nigiri and $4.40 chips on a stick. They were both nice, but nothing I would really rave about. I would literally go back to Busan just for their amazing fish cakes and rice cakes alone. I had to grab some more. This was one of my fondest memories in Busan. Sitting outside at 1am and enjoying some delicious seafood. I stumbled across this busy restaurant with huge tanks of Dokdo shrimp, which is a premium delicacy in South Korea. I ordered the smallest quantity for $77, which is definitely not cheap. But I had no idea it came with so many other dishes, including abalone and snow crab. I was so happy because crab is one of my favorite seafood dishes to eat. You have to sip all of the juices from the head. It's the best part. I was in heaven. It was so incredible and sweet. Just look at how beautiful the steamed Dokdo shrimp is. It has such a gorgeous striped pattern, but be careful when you peel it though because it's spiky. It was so, so sweet and tasty. I loved it. I was surprised a few of them had so many eggs, which were crunchy. To end the meal, I ordered shrimp ramen for $11. I added in the Dokdo shrimp heads from earlier for extra flavor and it was delicious.
This is everything I ate from KFC Korea part one. First up, I grabbed a $3.50 God Sweet Spicy Chicken and wow, this thing is huge. Yes, they give you gloves to eat the chicken here. It was super juicy and had a nice kick of spice. I loved it. Next, I got a $6.50 Scorcher Burger. The massive fried chicken patty was so crunchy yet juicy and the hash brown balanced out the spice. It was so good. Then I tried the $3 cheese balls, which were stretchy and sweet. They were okay, but not something I'd order again. I grabbed a $3.50 dollar piece of black label chicken which was boneless and super crispy and i swear the burgers here are wrapped so nicely this is a five dollar shrimp burger and it was really tasty if i had to pick a burger though i would choose the chicken scorcher burger over this that one was next level the two dollar cajun fries were quite nice and i love how the drinks are refillable i really milked this <laughs> i was keen to try the two dollar fifty biscuit since we don't have this in australia and it had a kind of cakey texture not bad this is everything I ate from KFC Korea part two. This is a $3.50 spicy and sweet habanero chicken. So the menu had a chili sign next to it, but I was not prepared for how spicy this was. My mouth was literally on fire. Then I grabbed the $3 fried chicken skin and gosh, this was addictively crispy. Just listen to that crunch. Now for another beautifully wrapped burger, and this time it's a $5 bulgogi burger. This one was light and sweet, but not a must try in my opinion. I grabbed a $3 hot and crispy chicken, which was perfectly cooked and delicious. Moving on to snacks, I got a $2 cheese stick, which was nice, but the $3 corn squid bites were even better. I tried these $3 twist sticks. They have a red bean flavor and a cheese flavor. It was pretty average, but it had a nice chewy texture. And oh my gosh, they have $2 egg tart. It had the perfect level of sweetness and flakiness. I did not expect it to be this good. KFC Korea is great. This is the Wagyu beef of pork. It's called Jeju black pork or hook dweji. I visited a barbecue restaurant where they cook it for you and wow, it kind of looks like beef even before it's cooked. I dipped it into an anchovy sauce and it was delicious. It had a steak-like flavor and a soft chewiness that was just so tasty to eat. I had the best time making different wraps and when I got lazy, I just ate them like this. Oh, and this $10 kimchi jjigae with generous pieces of Jeju black pork was also heavenly. It was 73 Australian dollars for 600 grams of Jeju black pork and I think it was absolutely worth it. I drove over one hour to the middle of nowhere to eat this abalone. This restaurant in Jeju Island only serves four dishes. And you guessed it, it's all abalone. The first thing I tried was this $33 grilled abalone. It was hands down the best abalone I've tried. It was so buttery with a soft chewiness. Next was a $17 abalone sizzling stone pot rice. The rice was infused with the abalone flavor. I always burnt myself because it was so hot, but it was was so delicious. And then the $13.50 abalone porridge was something dreams are made of. The mouth-watering flavor of the abalone innards just melts in your mouth. To top it off, they had plenty of side dishes, including this grilled mackerel. If you love abalone, I highly recommend adding this place to your bucket list. Rating what I ate at Dongmoon Market in Jeju Island. I started off with a $4 grilled Jeju black pork skewer, which was incredibly succulent and spicy. Definitely a 10 out of 10. Then I grabbed a $10 shrimp skewer. The meat was super plump and juicy. You've got to suck the head, of course. This was a 9 out of 10. The $9 grilled abalone was a bit tough and the spicy sauce overpowered the natural flavors, so I'll give it a 6 out of 10. Then I grabbed a $5 halibong juice, which was really refreshing, 7 out of 10. And you can't miss the huge flames and music blasting from this store. The lobster was quite average to be honest, so I'll give it a 6 out of 10, but I feel like they deserve extra points for the show. Next, I tried an $8 pork abalone rice. I loved the sweet chunks of pork, but I couldn't taste much abalone flavor in the rice, so I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Then I grabbed this $4 cheese octopus, and it was surprisingly delicious. It was sweet, and the cheese somehow worked so well with it. 9 out of 10. Last but not least, I grabbed a $5 Jeju tangerine ice cream. This was so refreshing, sweet, and sour. 10 out of 10. Thank you. 
so many of you are saying this fish looks like a baguette and now I can't unsee it. This is a silver cutlass fish, also known as hairtail or kalchi, and it's a must try in Jeju Island. I visited this restaurant that serves it as part of a huge course for $91 for two people. I was so shocked when they wheeled out all of the side dishes. I'm talking about abalone, sashimi, grilled mackerel, raw marinated crab, and so much more. I mean, these dishes alone could be a meal in itself. The star of the show is definitely the grilled cutlass fish though. It was so flaky and moist. I savored every bite. I loved how it didn't taste fishy at all. It just had the perfect level of saltiness and it was just so juicy. Now let's try it cooked in a different way. This is kalchi jorim or braised cutlass fish. It literally fell apart as I picked it up. That's how tender it is. It was spicy and succulent and just absorbed all of the incredible flavors it was simmered in. A spoonful of the fish, radish and rice soaked up in that gorgeous sauce was the perfect bite. This was literally seafood heaven.